Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. We've got another special guest for us today. Say hey, uh, Miss Elizabeth Garozzo. Hello. You said that right. I did. Look at that. You did. <laughs> I was hoping that I did. So uh, for those that don't know who Miss Elizabeth is, um, you may know her from her feature with voice play on their cover of In the Hall of the Mountain King, which is a classical piece. Um, she's... She's a very talented singer, and I'm excited to have her with us today. So, um, you ready to get hammered with a lot of questions? Yeah, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> awesome. All right, awesome. So, we we have a bit of a tradition around here. So, we have a bunch of questions that we go through, then we'll take a break after we knock those out, and then after okay. that, we'll okay. give you a chance to advertise and share anything you want after that, and we'll go into some community questions. Okay. So... All right. Without further ado, we will jump into the traditional questions. So um, this is the first one that I like to ask. What is your favorite or your preferred drink? Uh, mm, bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> alcohol, no alcohol. It doesn't matter. Anything that you like. Yeah, I, I, bourb, I like all the, if I'm ordering a cocktail, it's, it's bourbon. Bourbon. Nice stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like it's strong yeah. too, I see. Yeah. You know, is it, is it bourbon or is it tea? Who knows? <laughs> you never, you look at it and you're, mm. who knows? Who knows? <laughs> okay. So now we're going to get into some of the more nitty gritty questions. Okay. Um, what or who got you into music and how did you, or how did you find out you could sing? So you can answer that however you wish. I wish that were a short answer. I, I mean, I, I've always sort of been involved in music I, ever since I was really little. Uh, you know, I think I started piano lessons at four. Yeah. And um, I, I had always wanted to sing. I, I think I heard um, Andrea McArdle sing Annie when I was five and I wanted to be her. <laughs> so, um, you know, my, my mom was a singer. So I had music all around me. She played piano and she was a singer as well um so i had music all around me all the time my my dad played guitar they were in a little folk band together in college that's um, cool i know it was so sweet they were you know i don't know like mamas and the papas type stuff yeah they, yeah super cute in the in the 60s and um so i had music all around me i i think i i was enamored with olivia newton john i was i mm -hmm. was enamored with andrew mccardle i i wanted to i wanted to be them um, so all the, the greats. Those my, all the greats. They were those were my first influences, really. Um, but my mom was a she was a you know taskmaster with practicing and everything, and I I really didn't want her. Um, you know, not destroying what my dream, but mm -hmm. you know, just judging me uh, yeah. so harshly for what I loved, and I didn't want I, I didn't want that tarnished. So mm -hmm. I chose a different instrument. I didn't choose the voice. I chose the cello. So I, I actually started playing cello when I was 10. 10. And I was 10 and I caught on really quickly. Um, I went immediately to, uh, I went to a private arts high school in mm -hmm. Northern Michigan and from Michigan. Originally. Oh, okay. I went to Interlochen Arts Academy. I, I played the cello at Interlochen Arts Academy. Um, and I graduated from there. I, I, went to Western Michigan University on a cello scholarship. I was convinced I was going to be a cellist. You know, that was my destiny in life. And there was, uh, um, I mean, I joined the choir. I sang in choir. I sang in high school. I, I mean, I sang in all the choirs. Yeah. Um, but I never really thought that I, I, I was good enough to be a singer <laughs> or to qualify as a singer, you know, for what singers did, for all right. the voice majors, what they were doing and all the, the opera majors and the vocal jazz majors. I'm like, I can never do that. It's not, it's not me, but I, I, I joined the choir in college, um, two years into to college. And, um, he happened to be the, the conductor happened to be the vocal jazz director. And, um, I caught his ear and he said, you know, and I, I, broke down in tears in his office. And I, and I said, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to sing. And, um, my cello teacher never spoke to me again. Wow. True story. Wow. Um, but that's how like my music, my vocal direction started. 
the only, I think it, it's really interesting. Uh, so many of the reactors have said, oh my gosh, you must have extensive opera training. And I really don't. <laughs> I have very little opera training. I that first year that I was a voice student at Western Michigan after, you know, switching my major, mm -hmm. um, that first year I was, um, I was cast in the magic flute. I mean, there, there were a few comments like, she should do magic flute. She should do queen of the night. Well, I, I have done it. <laughs> I was 20, I was 20 years old when it happened, you know, it was, I oh, was wow. very, very green and very, um, you know, I, I think I was cast because I had range and I was coachable. <laughs> I mean, really, I, I mean, that was about it. Um, and, and out of that came, you know, more vocal jazz and more ensemble singing. And that just led me into my career at Disney. So, uh, to elaborate on that question that I did ask you, so tell us a little bit about your career in, um, Disney and how you got it or how you used your voice in, as in your music career for them. So I auditioned for the Voices of Liberty. Um, I don't know. I think I was maybe 25 years old, 24, 24 years old. Um, and I, I went down and I did the audition. They hired me in my audition. Derek Johnson, you, you know, handed me his card and said, you know, make sure that, that you call me if anybody else called you. Um, so I knew I, I had that job right away. Um, wow. And Voices of Liberty is a, is a eight part acapella. Um, it was exactly what I was trained to do from my vocal jazz training um, is ensemble singing, mm -hmm. um, wide, wide part ensemble singing. Right. And um, Derek Johnson was the director and he was the arranger and he was wonderful to me and very welcoming. And um, I was there for 17 years. I stayed there. I, I, came, I came in as a first soprano again because of range yeah and um subsequently learned second soprano and first alto and uh, you know all the dickens uh, all the americana all the christmas dickens and all the candlelight um processional stuff which is where i met voice play oh wow see that's a cool little twist there so <laughs> um that's really cool that you that you kind of uh, got to know voice play that way. I thought that was really cool with that. That was interesting. Yeah. We, we talked they off camera voice. and it was really yeah, cool. That she yeah. was telling me this stuff. Um, so with that said, I've got another good question for you. Uh, this might kind of coincide with what I just asked, but, um, who are some of the most in influential figures, both in your life, as well as your musical career? Uh, interestingly enough, I mean, I would say that it's a vocalist, but neither one of them are vocalists. Um, the first one was, um, his name is Benjamin Zander, and he is, he's the conductor of the Boston Philharmonic, I believe. Um, oh, wow. And he, he's a cellist himself. And when I was, I was really doubting myself as a musician. I was about a sophomore in high school. He would come to my high school, my Inwakenhurst Academy and, and conduct. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those were like exuberant, positive, just exudes energy and positivity at every corner. Yeah. And he, he had come my sophomore year uh, after being there the um, previous year. And I was really feeling down about myself. And, and I walked up to him and I said, oh, I'm so glad you're back. And he looked me straight in my face and he called me by name and he said, I remember you. You were the little one in the back. He <laughs> said, you were fabulous. Oh, my goodness. And, and he, of course, I'm like, I, you know, I was a freshman. I was, you know, last year in this sea of all of these prodigies. Right. And I, I, I just caught on quickly. I was no, I was not prodigious in any way. <laughs> um, I just had a good ear. And, and I said, I just, I don't know if I'm feeling this. And he said, he said, you don't have to feel it. What, what are other people doing while you're doing this? Uh, are they feeling it? Because if they're feeling it, you're doing something right. That's a good point. That's a really you good know, point. If, if you're feeling it, they're doing something right. And um, it's sort of connected to that was, my, uh, was the other one. And, and that was my vocal jazz director who, you know, said, you know, you got something here. Kid, you, 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 you just do. And he had all kinds of isms. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're five minutes early, you're 10 minutes late, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, 
and he always said there are always two sets of eyes on you at all times when you're on stage there are always two sets of eyes on you at all times and i feel like those are connected um somebody's always watching you and i thought that was really um i thought that was really important as a performer you're you're connecting with somebody at some point yeah. all the time while you're on stage and um both of them had such faith in me as a musician and uh, as an instrumentalist as a singer to keep me going and to to make me pursue this and and i and i managed to have done it i fooled them all so yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And as you can see, she's quite successful. She's done very well here lately. So, I mean, with the feature on voice play, some of her other Disney work, I mean, she's got a good voice for it. So she's got, that's gotten her to where she is. So, I mean, regardless of if she, she felt it or not, everyone else felt it. So. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. It, and some people don't know this either, but whenever just knowing that you're touching someone else with your music, it's, it's really, uh, it's really a baffling and humbling experience too, because even when you're not feeling it, the the best part about it is that a lot of other people may actually be. So. It really, it, it really is. And it's, it's also very scary, you know, part oh, yeah. of, part of, you know, I've always sort of been in the background. Um, I'm an ensemble singer. I'm, uh, you know, a jingle singer. I'm, you know, the the BGVs on this track or that track. It's, you know, I'm in park parade or fireworks show or whatever. Yeah. You know, this track that went to Japan or that track that went to Disney Cruise Line. I'm like, it, I have no problem not being out in front. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. Yeah. And so to be kind of front and center in in this way is really terrifying especially <laughs> yeah. when you have so many eyes watching you oh, I know. So you, and back you in know, high school band i was the same way i was like i was just i played the trombone back in high school and i remember when i would be playing in the back and whenever i kind of like would have a piece of my own where i would have like maybe a solo or something it was it was terrifying to me too so i mean that, that's kind of a feeling that cross the board for us musicians and singers is that if we if we get put in the limelight and we're used to being more like in the background and not used to taking leads per se, then sometimes it can be really terrifying, but. It really is. I mean, well, especially in, in, in like this scenario, I mean, stepping out for a solo, you kind of get used to doing that in, you know, ensemble singing and, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, even I, you know, we, I did the off Broadway show of toxic audio. So I was up in New York. I, I did, I did off Broadway. Like it's, it's crazy. That's crazy yeah. to me that I did that, you but, know, on, I, on, I on Broadway that. in, in New York. It's Off crazy, probably, but, probably, yeah. But yeah, but I mean, even even there, I was with an ensemble. It wasn't just me. Yeah, you know, it's 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 terrifying. It's it's really terrifying. So, um, this challenged me just a little bit. This, this challenge. <laughs> it was. It seems like it was a good challenge, though. You seem to do well with it. So. Well, it was. It, they're easy to work with, and they're so much fun. Oh they're my goodness! They're such good balls. Yes. They're so much. Fun. We'll go, we'll go more into that here shortly, guys. Yeah. Um, what is something that one of these influential figures that you just mentioned has said to you that stuck with your, your entire music journey? I know you kind of sort of went into this already, but if there's any one particular thing that you, that they have said that you have not mentioned that has stuck with you. Oh gosh. Um, obviously the one that you mentioned with the conductor. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously Derek Johnson was also really super influential. I mean, he was um, my director in, um, and, and arranger for Voices of Liberty. And he always said, I mean, this is kind of his mantra and, he, and, and how he led his life as well was to do one thing and do it well. Yeah. You know, if, do one thing and do it well. Like it, I know he always wanted to be a singer and his really true, true talent was arranging. That's, that's what he was called to do. And he was brilliant at it. And he's, he, he had to remind himself, you know, just to do the one thing and do it really well. And that's, and that's a really good point too, because if, if you don't do what, what you're truly good at, then that's typically that's your purpose in life, right? If you've got a talent right. that you're good at, then, you know, it, you don't take advantage of it, then, you know, what, it, what are you doing? You know, like some things too, you may, you may realize that you're not good at yet. 
and you you'll find out that you're good at it but if you know that you're good at something and you're not taking advantage of it then f- me asking you like w- what exactly are you doing you know <laughs> well i think it's also important to to um you're right but i i think it's also important to remember that um whether or not you're good at something or even if you are good at something mm-hmm. the measure of success is not notoriety of course yeah necessarily. it's not fame it's not you know i've had a very successful what i consider a very successful career um like i said hovering in the shadows mm-hmm. I, I, I did i you know you know the fame wasn't where i was going with it and i and i was perfectly happy to to not be there um yeah but it's it's fun when you do get to be out front obviously but yeah um you can you can be successful and you know not be on the voice or whatever yeah and, you can tell and it's a beautiful thing too this not always it, it's like she said notoriety is not always the sign that you're good at something you'll you'll know when you're good at something because st- several things will line up if you get what i'm putting if you're picking up what i'm putting down th- several things will line up for you to do what you're good at if you're good the at stars it. align that's right for sure that is right a hundred percent on that so on to our next one so you kind of touched us on this already so you played piano as a kid and you told us that you played the cello so do you play any other instruments and if so what are they no i'm just i'm i'm actually just a cellist so i don't know if several of your um of your subscribers may have checked out my page already i do i am playing the cello on my page so there's a video of me playing cello on my page yes i I got to see that he wrote that he wrote that yeah that is that was for that was for um another sorry i'm just rearranging here um that was for uh one of the patty cake productions lane's other um company yeah yeah um that was for patty cake productions the stepsisters react and um uh, if you there's a little trivia there tim faust is also in that video oh wow um, I, I actually I didn't know ten, it's really long like that video is really long so i just posted the clip of myself on my on my youtube but that video uh from patty cake is really long if you if you go on their website it's the stepsisters react and um i think i'm about at the 10 minute mark but tim faust comes in before <laughs> <laughs> he's got his overall son it's, it's precious <laughs> But Lane wrote that. He wrote the whole thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. And for those that don't know, Lane is uh vo- is one of voice plays arrangers in addition to their beatboxer and also sing. Dude is insanely talented. So the fact that he arranged a cello piece is also really cool to know that he he can also d- arrange for that as well. He so. he actually played the violin on that. I I'm pretending to play violin. I don't really play the violin. That was Lane playing violin. Really? So he's yeah he's a string player as well and um, an absolutely phenomenal vocal percussionist. I oh mean, my goodness! He, it's it's mad. I I don't I don't know of anyone who can match him. I don't you know. know. I okay. mean, he's way up there. Like he's transcended the level of like average bass singer. It's, he's just gone up and up. Like, it's master class. I'm telling level. you. Yeah. He's just yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh my gosh, man. I'd, I'm gonna have to get him and them on at some point. I'd love to ask him yeah, more about for it. Sure, sure. Um, let's see. Uh, how long have you been playing, uh, your cello? So you said you, was it 10? You said age 10? Yeah, I started at 10 and I, when I switched over to voice, I really set it down. Like I, I really put it down. I didn't pick it back up for a long time. Um, it, it was maybe six or seven years before I actually picked it up again and yeah. started to play. And, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard going back and I don't quite have the dexterity that I had and I don't play it every day. So. Well, yeah, um, at least you still have it for memories, right? I do, I do, and I still have my cello. It's you know, it's it sits by my piano, and um, but every now and then I pick it up, and you know, I'll pretend I'll do something where TikTok or whatever. I don't know, <laughs> something will come out eventually. Yeah, yeah, and and from what that one video she does have on that channel of hers, it was is really nice. So y'all should check that out if you get a chance. So. Um, there is a video that I did. Um, you can also, you can find her profile on that. And I'll also link her in the description of this video. 
but uh, you'll have to check out what you do have on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Um, what are some things that most people may not know about you? Gosh. And this, this, could, uh, this, this is a very op- open-ended question. So you go wherever you want with this. What, what would you, I mean, I was a Disney princess. Oh, um, I was a Cinderella at one point. Um, when was that? I, I, I how was that? Or it when? Was great. Oh, when was that? Uh, that was 2001 and 2002. I was uh, three and four years old. <laughs> you would have been my my perfect demographic. I would have been waiting for the stage. <laughs> Is there anything else that anyone doesn't know about you that would be interested to know? We had uh, we we sang with performed with lots of celebrities at, at Epcot, um, especially during Candlelight, and um, I made Whoopi Goldberg laugh once. That was. <laughs> like just a highlight for me i you know i can't repeat what it is it's like it's it's not very family friendly but i i mean <laughs> it was a slightly you know <laughs> it was a little out there <laughs> out there it was you know she she i compliment i got to go back and sing in her break room for her i sing a christmas song for her with the rest of the cast and you know we addressed like how like a holiday barbie like we're really like in these red sequined dresses and i mean they're just awful they were just, i mean very looked very good from you know the audience but up close it's all a big old mess and um i i i remember complimenting her on her recent um tour you know how much we liked it and my husband and i would sit there and watch it and laugh and everything and, and specifically one part of it which i won't repeat and she said oh my god i didn't know you guys were like actually but you all were so you know i said how can you I'm like can you take how can you take anything seriously when you're dressed like in holiday barbie and she just lost it it's it, she just she just lost it so that's but, really um, cool yeah and i've had i mean i've had really some really fun celebrity interactions jim caviezel he played um he played jesus in the passion um i yes. had a really great church gig in orlando um uh, really high and great high profile. I did, I had a lot of lyrical singing there. So that's, that's probably like where my learn to lyrical is, was, you know, at least honed a little bit. Yeah. Big, huge Catholic Roman Catholic church. And, um, he had come for Christmas and I was pregnant with my son at the time. I was very, very, just barely pregnant. And so I was, um, ready to heave, you know, over the rails with morning sickness. Yeah. And I was to not, in order to not do that, I was eating um, red licorice Twizzlers. Oh. I was just <laughs> like, I'm like, I, I cannot hurl on Christmas Day. Like, I, this can't happen. <laughs> and I look over to the side, and Jim Caviezel is is sitting there in the in the pew with his wife and his little boy, and. <laughs> And I'm, I, can, I can see that he recognized me from the night before, from, from Candlelight. And yeah. I, after the service was over, and we walked out, and, and uh, he caught me. <laughs> he caught my arm. And I said, I'm so sorry. I'm just a little bit morning sick. And he's like, you sounded beautiful. And I will never forget, because he's very tall and very handsome. Yeah. And, I, and he just gave me this big hug, and he was wearing a very, very soft cashmere sweater burgundy cashmere sweater and i remember thinking this man is jesus he, he's jesus and he's hugging me and he feels like jesus i he, it was so warm and delightful and made me forget that i had morning sickness it was it was wonderful so jim caviezel healed me at least for the for the afternoon <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny that's a funny little moment right there i'll tell you I mean, oh, I've got God. all kinds of those stories. There's, you know, there's Gary Sinise was there once. Um, I was singing for soprano, and after the show was done, they all the celebrities can say a little something. And he pointed to me, and he said, "What's your name?" I'm stunned, you know, I, <laughs> you know, Elizabeth. And he said, "Would you sing that note again?" I mean, it was like a high D or something like that. And I just, you know, all the, again terrifying <laughs> because now not only are all the audience on you but like the lights are on you and the, you've you, also got like, daggone gary sinise stuff. calling you out you got gary i got gary sinise calling you out and i mean 
I think they still talk about that to this day. <laughs> I think that has lived on in infamy. So. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's and he's cool. That's and he's cool. awesome. He's a really good guy. He's a really good guy. Oh man. That's cool. That is so yeah. cool. I've heard he's a good guy, but now I've just, you heard it here first folks. <laughs> yeah. He's a great guy. <laughs> oh, um, what are some things that you do in your off time when you're not singing, recording, performing, et cetera? Uh, I have two teenagers. Oh. So, I mean, if that doesn't say it all, I, I mean, my daughter is, um, she's now in the throes of high school. She's just started high school Ooh. and she's in musical theater and she is 100% in musical theater. She is in, in golfed in it. She is in robed in it. Wow. That's awesome. Every aspect of musical theater. She's in a school for performing arts. Um, she goes to school and then she has conservatory for two hours after school. So uh, she, she is really into that. My son is in driver's ed. He's 16. Uh, so he is, you know, learning to drive and that's terrifying too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As well. And, uh, and other than that, I do, um, I mean, as far as sort of work goes, I do uh, staging and um, holiday decorating yeah. for um, clients, for some clients here. I'm in, in, I'm in Southern, in case you didn't know, I'm in Southern California. Southern so Cal. I'm in Cal. SoCal. Yeah. SoCal. So I have some um, clients out here that I, I will go and, and do holiday decorating for, and I have some neighbors that I will also do as well. And um, just, I like to make flower, you know, make flower arrangements and, and make the world beautiful. That's and that's, that, that's cool. That's an underrated yeah. side gig too. If you're good at decorating, that's a cool way to make a little bit of cash every once in a while, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if my husband would agree. Like it's it usually costs me more money to do it <laughs> and to bring it in. So But hey, at the I end of the day, it's pretty, that. right? Yeah, at the end of the day, everything <laughs> looks yeah, it looks like it could be on Pinterest. There you go. <laughs> Um, how often do you practice singing throughout the week and how long do you typically practice for? Uh, as far as practicing goes, I don't know how I don't really practice as, as much, um, as much as I actually sing. Um, I'm singing in the shower every day. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm in the shower, I'm singing, you know, my little TikTok shtick is that I sing in the shower and that's my, that's my thing. Oh, yeah. Lauren Paley sings in her stairwell. Yeah. There's a gal who sings on, you know, in the subway, I sing in my shower. So, I mean, there you go. You got to have your niche on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Not that I ha I don't have that many followers, but you know, hey, if, it's if something. You're, hey, go follow me. I will take it. I'll I'll, I'll, do, I'll, do I'll it definitely check you out. Me. I'll definitely check you out. Oh, awesome. awesome. The um, I I am uh, guilty as charged for singing in the shower too, because at the end of the day, I don't <laughs> know why, but it's something about the acoustics in the bathroom. I guess. Well, of course, that's the, like that. You want the good acoustics. You don't want to like. That singing the, like a dead room, right? Yeah, that the fact that you don't have anyone else around, so that doesn't bother me usually. Like my husband's, he'll he's fine with it. Like he doesn't mind at all, huh. as long as as long as he's not on a call. Um, my husband works for Disney. He's an executive for Disney. Oh wow! Um, is that you may not know about me there, but um, That's cool. there's no nepotism. I swear, I I promise. He, he's, <laughs> he's in a completely different area. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool that's a cool fun fact guys that's awesome yeah yeah that's cool i will tell you what he does <laughs> so um what does your warm-up routine look like like if you're gonna go sing what does your warm-up routine look like a yeah. lot of slides a lot of slides uh you know cool. a lot of warming up of the upper range um i will go to straws if i have to if i'm feeling like particularly sticky yeah. at all like in a in a you know my in my break or at anything i will go to straws and and try to to you know get the false resistance that's there you know forced resistance mm -hmm. um and because i'm i'm a sustainer as well if i i you know i i'm the queen of the long note so if i can if i can continue my sustain i mean i gotta work my lungs i have to a lot of that it's it's lung work breathing work yeah um, and range work. Yeah. So for, for, for those out there that don't know, can you give a very brief explanation of what singing through a straw does, uh, for your voice? So it, it, what it does is it creates a false resistance. Um, uh, so it makes it, it, depending on, on the, um, well, the width of the straw, 
it will it will make it uh, harder to to force air through. So you have to where your your support has to work harder. Oh, so you see. really have okay. to to work the support to get the air through, and and that just creates a um, and it's just an easier way to keep your sustain going. I see. Okay. There you go, folks. Sing through a straw every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and it helps with range. It does help with my range. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've been able to just tweak my range a little bit, like just just ever so, you know, inch that to if I needed to hit that F or whatever, I will, you know, because I just, I don't live there really anymore. Not, not, I'm up in the in the six suite. I call it the six suite, you know, the C6, D6, C6, you know, mm -hmm. up there. But I, I don't really live above an E6 anymore. So if I really had to get up there, it's through the straw. Yeah. I sound like a chipmunk, but it, at least it gets <laughs> me kind of, <laughs> gets me there. And that it was, helps to relax. How, uh, helps to relax. Side question. How, how um, do you have that note that you sang in, in the Hall of the Mountain King, the D yeah. flat six? You have that every single day? It's actually D6. D6. Um, the D6. Um, I think, you know, it's really funny. I do have it. I did. It's, I have it without, like, I could do that any day of the week. Um, I think it was Peter Barber. I think he, he overqualified me with a G6. I think he told me, like, this is the same. He's like, is that, what's a G6? I, no, Peter. It's not <laughs> so for it's anyone that's watching this podcast that doesn't, has not heard a D6 before, that is, let me untranspose. So this is a D6, I believe. Oh, I can't hit a thing right. Here we go. That's a really high note. So, I mean, it's it's not, it's obviously within her range, but it's it's high. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, the uh, Frozen the Frozen video that you hear me on, but don't see me on, um, mm -hmm. that's an E. That's an E6. Yeah, so it goes even higher than that D that you it's heard. A very, so. At the very end, is an, that's an E6. Yeah, um, I forgot yeah. about that. Uh, Lauren, Lauren does an E flat on, um, ding dong. Yes. On hide and seek. Yes. I noticed that whenever I was doing the, my first video on my, on that reaction, yeah. she did the E flat six and I was like, yeah. it was, that was crazy. Yeah. Well, oh the D six didn't actually, or it, it wasn't even there. Um, I, I know I'm good, like veering off topic that D six didn't exist until we, I walked in the studio and I was like, Dude, you didn't give me any like high, high stuff. I said, I have this, you know, like this, these two measures that we're singing here. I'm hearing this. Do you, are you open to it? And, and he was like, absolutely. So I sang it for him and he's like, oh my God, it's in, it's in. <laughs> so, six didn't exist until I walked in the studio. Wasn't that is really awesome. Me. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's really cool that you can just kind of walk in. You're like, you didn't give it, let me, let me just casually pop a D6 here. And they're like, <laughs> it's. It's in. It's in, folks. It's in. You got That's it. That's <laughs> awesome. Awesome stuff, man. Um, so um, uh, what are some of your record high uh high notes as well as low notes, if you know what they are? Uh well, I for Queen of the Night, it's an F. F six. It's an F six. Um, and you know, I was kind of lousy at it when I did. I mean, I could get there. It's I don't, but again, I this Sustaining an F is that would take everything. There, in are, you, other, there it? are other singers who there are other singers who do that beautifully, and I, I am not one of them. So, <laughs> um, but, but yes, I have I have done an F um, comfortably comfortably the E flat the D for sure E flat. Um, I kind of live around there, um, and then my lows. I'm, I'm probably about an F, like an F three. An F three, yes, yes, yeah, so yes. That one, yeah, yeah. So that's that's a pretty that's a very workable range for sure. That's a very workable range. It's workable. I mean, if you it's workable if you have a nice belt, which I don't have. I don't have a belt, so I'm just I'm I'm all mix and head. Well, you've got a really. I will say you've got a pretty nice. Um, you've got a pretty nice belt up there in when you're in the D range. I can see. Well, that's, I mean, I mean, that's just, I'm pinning it to the, you like know, back, pe of, the, like back pe of the like wall, pe but that's all, RPM. that's all right here. That's not, there's nothing chesty about it, but oh, that's wow. all right there. Well, you got it though. That's pretty, that's still pretty cool. 
there's some power behind it for sure but but that's all that's all heady power oh yeah for sure. um what are some of your personal favorite artists that you've collaborated with and who would you like to collaborate with in the future oh gosh um well voice play obviously <laughs> i mean <laughs> past and present for, for, for both. Oh, man. Um, who would I want to collaborate with in the future? Who wouldn't I want to collaborate with? That's a, um, honestly, that's a good question now that I think about right? it. Right? Who wouldn't I want to collaborate? I mean, I, I, if the, if the Boston pops called me, if Danny Elfman called me and said, Hey, come sing on my, in my new film or in my concert or whatever, <laughs> I would do that. I mean, if Peter Barber's watching, I, you know, I would base gang with them. I would do that. Uh, you heard that here sure. first, base gang. Yeah, base gang. Come on. Um, oh gosh. Uh, you know, I, I would love to. I would love to sing something with Rob Lundquist um, from Home Free. He's got a beautiful voice. He does have a beautiful. Well, he and Austin both, and Austin yes. actually. Austin sang at Disney with me as well, so he is an old friend as well. That's also really cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm super, I'm super, um, uh, but yeah, in fact, I think I messaged Austin and I said, hey, <laughs> hey, you sound great. He's like, I don't want to be known as an opera singer. <laughs> He's like, this is a big, I don't know if this is a mistake or not. I don't think I want to be like pegged as an opera singer. I'm like, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> was, that, um, was that for the, um, was that for the thing that the, that opera song that he did with uh, yeah, Rob? That he yes, in, in Rob that's Nason Dorma, I think. Nason Dorma, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. They did that together. That's really cool. You got a Texan yeah. doing uh, opera, so if that's not yeah, crazy, I, mean, I don't know what is. Oh gosh, uh, I mean, I would, I would love to sing in Lauren's staircase with her. You know, I would do that any day. Oh man, she, does she not have? The, I mean, does that title "Stairwell Siren" not fit her so well? It's so perfect. It, it's so it perfect. Not? Yeah, like I mean, she she'll just sit there and she'll just do those n nice high notes or whatever, and then I mean, it's just it's just like it it fits her so well because she's just sitting there doing these siren like notes like you would hear on a pirate ship out on sea. But she's doing her stairwell and it echoes, it gives it that much more awesomeness. And it's just, I know, it's, I it know. fits so well. Perfect. Uh, oh my gosh. Lauren, you, you, uh, now that we've mentioned you, you need to come visit us if you're watching this. So I know, Lauren, like give the world a little peace, honey. Yes. Go. I sent you, uh, <laughs> I sent you a message on Instagram. So, uh, drop in if you get a chance. Um, anyway, moving along. Um, do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks for anyone that sings, wants to sing, or is trying to make a career out of singing? Uh, go for it. Like, there's, there's like, no life hack about it. Like, you just, you got to go for it. You heard it here first. Go you know, for it. Uh, you, you have to, like, it, know, know wh what you want to do. Own your voice you know, don't, don't try to pigeonhole yourself into, you know, know what you do well. Uh, like I said before, you know, do, do one thing and do it well. Don't force yourself to be something you're not. Um, and don't measure your success by, um, whether or not you are famous. It, that it's just, it's not a hundred percent accurate surefire way to determine that you're good at no. something. Yeah. You don't need views on Instagram. Mm -mm. to know that you're you know legitimate of course and and at the end of the day like it, it kind of goes back to what she said if you never know until you try right you, you never know until you try also i mean the sooner you learn how to re use recording equipment in your home the better off you'll be i'm like so far behind on that but like the sooner you learn how to do that and record for yourself the better off you're going to be yeah, I figured that out in my uh, YouTube journey, by the way, with this setup that I have right here. So I was sitting there filming my record or my reactions, but I was filming it with my phone and the audio from my phone. And it's right beside this, uh, this beefy PC that sounds like a jet engine whenever it starts working hard, like running a bunch of processes and stuff. So whenever I'd be watching this video, you just hear the background. Go, and I'm just... <laughs> I was like, it didn't register to me because I have a $450 microphone, $100 mic stand, 
a hundred dollar Presonius Auto Box audio box one, and I just have it all sitting here from where I wanted to sing at one point. I did, and I just kind of left it to be, but I didn't think to use it on my YouTube channel. I was like, wait, I know how to use this stuff. Why am I not using it? <laughs> easy i'm just i'm so like unbelievably impressed with the fact that i figured out discord that i i mean oh uh i'm i'm I, you didn't know you coming from not knowing it at all to doing a podcast on here is really good too i have to I have to give you <laughs> hand it to you for that i didn't even have to ask my son like i i was really i was really you know excited i figured it out <laughs> oh it's it's really cool i'm glad you were able to get it figured out you have to Guys, ask the if you're enjoying it so far, drop a like, drop a comment, and uh, if you want to see more people on here, uh, throw a subscription our way. We'll s see what we can do. All right, moving along. So that kind of brings us to the end of the traditional questions that we have here on the the vocast. So I'm now going to shunt over to the next section where I give you an opportunity to advertise, share whatever you want going into uh, your musical career. Tell us what you got going on with your life. You have the floor for the next little bit. So let us know what you got going on. Well, I wish I had more going on. Um, it's a uh, um, quiet around here for me, but I think that um, I'm in the process of maybe doing a second studio album, uh, like an EP. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like yet. I'm still, it's still in its infancy. So uh, that may be in the works. I, um, as far as advertising myself, I, I, I hope that voice play will call me again. I really hope that they get more into their, um, the, the instrumental arrangements. They did such a great job at it. I really hope that they will embrace that. They can have an, a whole new audience. I think they've gained a new audience because of it. Yeah. And I hope that they, um, they delve into that. I did. I did tell Lane when I told him I was doing this. I said, "I'll plug your video." So they have Christmas time is here, or Christmas don't be late. Christmas, Christmas don't be late. Um, the Alvin and the Chipmunk song is that's their new release, their new Christmas release with DJ Young. So that's out. Go check that out on YouTube. Yes, definitely um, go check that out, guys. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, and um, if you haven't gotten your Mountain Queen merch. Yes. So voice plays got, I forgot to mention this. So with their, with this video that she did with them, they have, um, they have in the hall of the mountain King, uh, merch and it's got her on it. Is that not like the coolest thing That's ever? Me. Like, isn't that the cutest thing ever? That is crazy. Cool. A little ring light, but, um, yes. And, and it's, it's, you can have mountain King or mountain queen. I'm sorry. They don't do like a mountain day, but I mean, is that still they, like they, really cool? It's a cool thing. I got my mug. I've, they've, they've got t-shirts and they, they've got a uh, ding dong up or hide and seek. I keep calling it ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> they've got um, hide and seek merch up. And um, I think if you, you go into their store, it's the voiceplay.com. I think if you go into their store, there are other voice play um, yeah. logo. There's other voice play logo merchandise there as well. Yeah. I'll but link yeah, that in the description. I, in the, um, in the next, Hopefully in the next year or so, I, I'll have a, something out for everyone. I, I do, um, I have a little snafu with my album, releasing it to Spotify, um, but I do have a, a, several of those songs on YouTube. You can go and check those out on YouTube um, and I will upload the others. They're not videos, they're just, they're just the, the uh, audio. But uh, if you want to listen to them, I will get them uploaded to YouTube, uh, a few more. Yeah, um, you heard it, guys. If you want to hear some uh, good cello work, then uh, she's gonna get some of that uploaded. I, well, it's more so your vocals, right? The vocals. It's yes. Vocals. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's from my. I did a lullaby album in 2016, and yes. um, I'll get some of those. I, I, I'm keeping some of them for myself. I'm keeping some of them for my kids, but um, yeah. but the ones I, I will release in public. I will put up there on YouTube. You heard it first, folks. She's got some uh, vocal content coming, so just kind of. Look for that link in the description and uh, go check her out when you get some time. So um, that concludes that portion of this section. So now this is also a section for you to ask me any questions should you have any for me. So you have the floor for that. Um, how, uh, the reaction videos, what started this? Oh, <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is actually a pretty convoluted one, but um, I think I, I kind of sort of answered this in the last one. 
So initially, this kind of goes back to my love for music when I started playing playing trombone in um, way back in middle school. Even I um, I got to love I got to love music. I eventually found out that I could sing. Found out that I had a voice. So I I ended up singing for several years, but I was more of like a background vocal singer, kind of like you were. Um, I was always used to singing in choirs and such, and really I was I was never really keen on like doing my own music or anything, since I, at the end of the day I was not really that, you know, if I listened to myself I would just, I would kind of maybe cringe just a little if I listened back, because I, I couldn't really think it was someone else. But that aside, I kind of decided to do this one-off reaction thing, because I saw that people were doing reactions, and I was like, hmm, I can do reactions, but I've got I've got all this musical knowledge in my head. I, I know how to read. I know how to read music. I know like all these musical terms. I know what this stuff means in music, and I know some something about musical theory. But what can I do with it if I'm not confident in sharing my my voice through music of my own per se. And I said, this is about two and a half weeks ago. I just said, ah, to heck with it. So I started a YouTube channel and I dedicated it to breaking down primarily vocal focused music, but I will start branching out soon. But like vocal focused music, so like acapella, you know, or music that has like two or more parts in it. And typically my... My goal with these reactions and breakdowns is to really help people understand why they love the music and not or and not just say I love the music. My best it's it's kind of like I said in my other podcast is that although some people may love their music, sometimes they can't really fully explain why they love it. So I'm like, oh, so this gives me a wonderful opportunity to take some of this music that we love and then. We listen to it together, and then I show you the coolest parts about the music and show you guys this is why this music is awesome, and this is why you love it. And then my goal at the end of the day is to help people understand why they love it. And if they come out of my reactions and breakdowns knowing more, then I've achieved my mission at the end of the day. That and, of course, the podcast with the singers and get more insight on music they've done, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, Good man. for you. And it's it's only been two and a half weeks and we've grown massively. I mean, I don't know, if, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but I feel like not very many channels get this big of a start in this short of a time. So thank you all so mm-hmm. much for that, by the way. I love you very much. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do this into like a yay me kind of thing. It's gonna be like, yo, we're growing so fast we can use this audience to reach more people, reach more ar- uh, artists, more singers. It's it's like opening a can of worms. It gets exponential at this point. Once I hit critical mass or we hit critical mass, we can start interviewing so many people and getting the content out to so many people. And that's that's the beautiful thing about this quick growth, I could say. Well, I'm honored to be part of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's, I just it's so much fun doing this and I didn't realize how much fun it was going to be until I started doing it. And the bet, the, the funniest part about it is that it was a spontaneous decision. Uh, it was an off the wall. I will just wing it. It's a spontaneous. I'm just going to do it and see what happens. And look what happened. My first reaction for voice plays cover of, um, a uh, hide and seek. It is now currently at, uh, 2.5 or 2.6 thousand or 2,600 views, which, is baffling a first video that has this many views thank y'all so much <laughs> but anyway if that gives y'all an idea of like how big this has gotten this is just like baffling i'm humbled thank y'all so much anyway this may be your thing that, that you do and do well <laughs> maybe so you know so far it, it seems it seems to be going very well so <laughs> let's let's hope it, that it continues right <laughs> awesome so um that kind of ends our section for there if you don't have any other questions for me. So uh, we'll be moving along to our community related questions now. These have been gathered mm-hmm. from several different Discord servers, my YouTube <laughs> oh, posts. No. 
Meh, these aren't too bad, so. Okay, so the first one that I uh, wanted to know, um, it's more of a request. Can you tell us a little bit more about your role in your feature with voice play on In the Hall of the Mountain King? So just kind of kind of walk us through how it, how your part, you know, started from start to finish, if you can. So um, Lane actually, about a year ago, he sent me hide and seek. And he said, do you know this song? Um, he hadn't arranged it yet, but I think he was going to. And um, I said, no, because I mean, it's like from an anime or video game or something like that. Yeah. I said, I said, no, but you know, I'll do anything you want me to do. Um, he hadn't formally asked me to collab yet. And uh, when I was there in, um, oh gosh, when was I there? I can't remember. It was uh, maybe February. He said, he said, we'd love to have you collab with us. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Oh, it was, I was playing, the, I was doing the cello thing. Oh, and yeah. he, he said, um, he said he was working on something and he wanted us, he wanted me to collab with them. Okay. And I was supposed to record, um, it, it was going to be Mountain King. He changed his mind from um, hide and seek to Mountain King. Um, uh, and I was supposed to record that in May of this year, and it just wasn't done. It wasn't ready. Voice play was so busy. Mm -hmm. um, they just didn't have it ready. So yeah. I had to actually fly back and do that in, um, in August. Yeah. And when I walked in, the guys had all recorded their parts already. So I was the last one to record. And mm -hmm. the, um, the direction that I got when, when I went into rehearsal with them, because I said, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know, what, what, who is she? Yeah. And um, I said, I said, direct me here. And he'd, he'd sent me some artwork ahead of time with, um, you know, some concept artwork with what we were all going to look like. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that I was going to be purple until I saw <laughs> that. And he'd sent me this, um, this, the giant breastplate thing. You know, he'd, he said, how do you feel about showing cleavage? Like, I not that I have any, but like, <laughs> like how do you feel about showing cleavage? I'm like, do it, let's do it all. Like, I'm, I'm in. Let's, let's play. You know, but he sent me a, a selfie of himself with the breastplate and the horns. It was very funny. <laughs> um, he said, "This is where we're going with this." I was like, "I'm all in, 100 percent." And um, the way that he described her is that she, you know, they were all these kind of goblins. Yeah. They were like these little trolls in there, and I was just supposed to be the, you know, the, the sexy one. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, that's the direction I got when we were recording, because, um, when, if you, if you watch the video, my voice style, my style doesn't change. Until, I mean, I do maybe four or five different styles in the song as it is, but yeah, my yeah. style doesn't change until I taste the soup. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he'd asked me, do you have a character voice you can do? And I said, yeah, I can do like a, like a Lisa Simpson sort of thing. You know, I can do <laughs> that that sort of thing but like caesar and ali had sort of already done that mm -hmm. so he said why don't you just be like a like a drunk jazzy girl <laughs> <laughs> so that's what i did i was like this drunk jazzy girl you know in, in the beginning i was da, 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 you know whatever <laughs> kind of like that section in the later part where lane does the, the drunken thing that was kind of cool yeah but except i mean i, I you can just if you can picture me with a, like a martini glass, that's like, that's what it, yeah, like you a know. <laughs> cross that and such, yeah. you know, so that's, that's what that, I was surprised that more people didn't, didn't mention this, where the spoon came from out of my, you know. Yeah. I did. I didn't even, I didn't even notice that either until you just mentioned it. Yeah. It came right from him. <laughs> We lost the spoon one day in one of the takes. I think we, we lost my nail in the hay. Like we we lost all kinds of stuff. In, in it was very fun. But 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 the character itself, she you know when when she tastes the soup, she sort of she turns into this you know um, up up you know Brunilda. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I thought that was a really cool yeah. comedic piece there too. Yeah, I mean it's very Bugs Bunny. Like I that's all I could think of in my mind was the Bugs Bunny cartoon. You know? Yes. Um, Oh, Brum Hilda, you're so lovely. You know. Yes. So I, can... <laughs> I got that vibe heavily when I was watching that. I didn't mention it in the reaction, but I got that vibe. Yeah. So that's sort of where where I was going with that. I I um I wasn't in on the carrot joke until much later. I I mean. <laughs> 
Lane and his carrots. Like I, I wanted to get <laughs> some because Lane's Jewish and and Ellie are Jewish and they they're celebrating Hanukkah and I I wanted to get them some custom Hanukkah candles that are here because <laughs> they're just so ridiculous. But uh, and he's such a prankster. Really, Lane is such a prankster. Um, but. But, but my character is, you know, somebody called her the underworld goddess, and I, I, I'm going to run with that. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to go with that underworld goddess. I'll go with that for sure. So is there any particular parts that you found interesting the most about that whenever you're doing that with them? Like any it really, really cool little pieces that you enjoyed doing with that that character? Uh, Anything that stands out? Well, here's the, here's the thing. And I didn't know it at the time, um, but I actually had COVID. <laughs> oh. Like, don't, like, nobody hate on me. Like, nobody come for me. I didn't know I had COVID. Um, I was, I'd, I'd flown to Orlando and I'd done, I had two other projects I was doing. I had the recording and then I had um, three nights of concerts that I was also doing. Yeah. And by, I was supposed to film the video with them on, on Monday. And on Sunday night, I was starting to feel a little scratchy. And I thought, oh, mm -hmm. it's just Florida allergies, you know. Oh, and yeah. so I was... Monday morning, I'm show up and I'm just inhaling gummy bears, you know, all day because I'm just keeping my voice, you know, we're not singing, uh, yeah. obviously, we're, you know, we're pretend singing, but we're not, yeah. you know, full out singing. Yeah. But I, of course, I don't want to cough on anybody and I want to, you know, get anybody sick. And, um, and I didn't test positive for another two days. So we, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, so a, a lot of it is a blur, but looking back on it like looking at what we were doing it was so interesting to me to watch the guys create because lane lane gets really focused on his end like on his end product and sometimes doesn't like think about all of the little what what you have to do here and here and there um and and ellie kind of was keeping him on track with that he's like well how are we going to do this you know if you don't do that if, but if you're going to have to do this and yeah he's like oh yeah I've got to do this too. So watching the creative process was un unreal. Like it was just, it You're was, just it was so watching all the puzzle pieces come together. Yeah. And like, and figuring out how we feel, how we were going to film each individual, you know, person stylistically. Um, and then seeing all of the effects come into play when I heard, like, I, I don't think I heard the, uh, the, official mix until i showed up on monday and i was just blown away like wow. i was blown away it sounded so good oh my gosh everybody sounded good so that was that i mean it just and then the makeup like oh my god the makeup who does the make who did the makeup was it so that was rick underwood and renette um oh gosh i forget her last name but renette um renette did my makeup and uh i had purple i think i had purple in my ears for at least four or five days i was like, getting purple <laughs> purple out of my ears um but the uh tony tony joaquin who is uh, you know former member of voice play and yeah. he's at you know, patty cake tony yeah yeah tony he was the one who got the costume for me and he he said you know i'm gonna order your costume you know what size do you need and i got there for the rehearsal and i put it on and he's like no that's way too loose <laughs> we need it tight we need it tighter. I, where's amazon i need to call and get a smaller size like three three sizes smaller i need it smaller um so with the costume on and then the, you know, the giant breastplate thing. And, yeah. and he had a corset on me and he said, okay, you, you have to tell me when it's, when it's, you know, too tight. You tell me when it's too tight, that, yeah. then it's perfect. So, <laughs> so I had the corset on super tight. I had the thing, I had the, the, my horns weren't staying on. Right. So we had to like tease them like right into my hair and yeah. you know, they were pinned over with a halo. So that was a little challenging. Like all of our, all of our apparatuses, you know, I had Caesar's ear was on this side of me and one of his ears kept falling off and it had to be, you know, consistently glued back on. And, oh my goodness. you know, Jeff, Jeff and his giant, you know, chin and, yeah. you know, the guys looked amazing, man. They looked so good. I, I walked in and Ellie's got this, you know, the horns and I was just, Oh my goodness. He looked, his looked really good too. It looked really good. I, I just, the whole process was just so much fun. It, um, I, I can imagine from start to finish. I mean, I yeah. just looking at the finished product, I can imagine that initially you would think something that magnificent would be a logistical nightmare, but they had it down. I'll tell you what, they had it down. Um, you know, Lane and, and Jeff really took care of the arrangement and, and all the, the, you know, the 
recordings and the vocals and everything and the mixing. And uh, when I heard when I heard Lane's VP added, I was just oh my god, it's blown away. It was it was fantastic. But Kathy, Kathy had the ship rolling. You know, Jeff's wife Kathy had she, she had the ship rolling, and wow. um, she she had lunch in for us. She was like, "You guys need to take a break now. <laughs> take a break. You know what? You know, everybody just chill. You know, oh you yeah. take a break now. You take a break now." She had everybody. You know, that's awesome. That yeah, everybody, awesome. everybody going, and uh, and you know nobody's tempers flare. Nobody, they they just work really well together. I'm just super pleased. I mean, at the end of the day, too, you can kind of see that with the with the music videos they do too with voice play. It's just it, if you ever like you just, you just catch them doing their music videos, and it's just you can kind of see even in the videos, you just know that they are a dream team. You you know. They are, and they're and they're visual. They're not just um, audio based. They're vi they're visual based. They're a very yes. visual ensemble. You know, um, it's it's part of what makes them stand out, I think, um, and be so successful in in the space in the YouTube space in the you know digital space. I think it's just they do such a great job visually as well oh, yeah. um, i mean if you've seen have you if you've seen the greatest showman video um it's just it's gorgeous it's, you know I, all of their videos have purpose to them you know yeah. and not just you know even even frozen where they're just sitting there they just they have they have purpose they're they I mean they're beautifully done agreed agreed <laughs> so let's see so i've got another one for you so okay. when you started singing, what was something you found difficult about singing? I, I mean, I guess I still find it difficult. I just, I don't, um, I, I have a hard time explaining how I sound. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I know that makes no sense to anybody, like, but. Oh, it does to me. Know, you know how you, I have a hard time accepting that I, I sound the way that I can sound. It, it's it's gonna be the it's gonna have to be the way it is yeah. you know i i can improve myself of course i can sing through this and i can work my way through through this break or that that you know i can you know spin this note better you know but but my sound is never going to change and that's that's <laughs> it's hard when you want to sound like somebody else you know you you just really have to you're you yeah and that's a hard thing sometimes for some of us like some of us that like are struggle a little bit with self-confidence too. Well, I know, I don't know about you per se, but I know for me, it's hard for me to accept how I sound, especially when I sing. So, I mean. It, it, it's just, it's odd. Yes. I, I, don't, I think that I sound differently when I'm singing as opposed to when I'm listening to myself sing. And then it's. Yes. Wow. I, I did not think I sounded like that. So um, for, for, and those, I don't... for those that don't know, it's just whenever you, whenever you're singing, you've, in your head, you sound way different than what it actually comes out mm -hmm. as. You do. You it's, do. It's, it's a crazy. It's a crazy little. Um, it's a crazy effect. I'm gonna have to coin a term for it, but yeah, I don't know what that is. I'll have to coin one for it at some point. So, um, you've kind of already touched on that one. Um, also touched on that one. So, um, can you elaborate a little bit more on how you met? the boys of voice play so like back when you first met them yeah uh, so when i first well they knew me before i knew them um like i said i i sang at disney i sang it in um uh, epcot's candlelight every year and we would do voices of liberty yeah. and the local high school choirs would come and they were part of those high school choirs so they knew me as the the girl who does the you know screaming high pop-ups and the little obligados, the high floaty obligados. They knew who I was. Um, I met them. I was already singing in toxic audio at the time. And um, I think this was, I want to say it was maybe 1998 or 99. There was a, it was the first little online competition. It was Ed McMahon's next big star. It was like an online version of star search. Oh, wow. And the two acapella groups were Toxic Audio mm -hmm. and Four to Five, which is now Boys Play. Wow. And um, the boys were just the most adorable. And of course, we knew them. We knew who they were because they were locals. And um, 
and they won of course they won and they should have they deserved it they absolutely deserved it they were just the, the cutest thing ever <laughs> and um and i remember sitting in the limousine afterwards and one of my one of my um bandmates said to me um i i think one of them has a crush on you <laughs> <clears throat> We'll say which one I, I i know who it is i won't say which one it is yeah we don't we'll save um, them the embarrassment well well no i mean i don't even know if they know that i know but <laughs> well, they know now but uh, no but we're all married and and, and you know it's, oh it's funny. yeah but also at the time it would have been really awkward because you know they they were just fresh out of high school and i was like maybe 26 years old 27 years old <laughs> i was old enough to be their babysitter <laughs> So it would have been a little awkward, but right. you know, now it would be fine, I'm sure, but, but no, no. Um, so that's how I met them. And then um, Jeff, I did Toxic Audio with Jeff. I believe he came, I think he was on the, in the Off-Broadway show with me. Um, that's kind of a blur, but I know we rehearsed the, the Off-Broadway show together. Yeah. And then um, Ellie, I actually met in um, Japan. I, I worked at Universal Studios in Japan for a, a contract. Wow. And he was over there also. And one of my friends uh, knew him from local Orlando talent. And uh, so I knew Ellie then. And I mean, I've known them ever since. That's so you've right. known them. You've known that she's known them oh, for a long time. A long, long time. Tony, Earl, all them. Tony came later. Um, Earl, yeah, Earl was in the, in the high school uh, um, and he was in four to five. Yes, I remember um, a little bit later tony came uh i want to say mid 2000 um but he was he was working at universal with jeff i think i think that's how they they met it's really funny people i've got a lot of comments or reading a lot of comments that say that, that jeff and i worked at disney together and i don't remember that happening huh. i don't remember i remember doing a, a a special event i was singing the national anthem for something and he was there with his now wife. They were singing in I don't know what little small ensemble they were they were doing something. Yeah. But um, but I was separate from them on the event doing the national anthem. Um, but I don't remember I don't remember working with him at Disney. Um, no, I, I don't think that happened. I, I could I could get corrected on that. So I, so you there's know, not a lot I remember. So so when did you come to uh, meet Caesar? So I didn't know that I knew Caesar um, <laughs> when I was doing, uh, when I was back at, at, and working at Disney regularly um, in Florida, every year was a cast choir celebration ensemble, the huge orchestra was all volunteer. And yeah. I was asked every year to be a soloist. Um, if you, if you look at me, um, look me up on YouTube and you just put in my name, a lot of those performances will come up. I'll have to look um, at those, yeah. And this, the year that I did Amazing Grace, I did David Clydesdale's Amazing Grace. Caesar was actually in that show. I had no idea. Oh, wow. <laughs> this year, when I when I came back for the anniversary show, Caesar showed up and I was like, oh, dude. And he's like, do you not remember that I was in that show? And I was like, I do not remember that you were in that <laughs> <laughs> So I, I knew Caesar before I knew Caesar. Um, but yeah, I, we officially became, you know, BFFs and bosom buddies. That's, the that the losing cool. of ears. And the coolest part is you didn't even know that you knew him until afterwards. I know. I it's so dumb. Like I, I should know. I should know. I, you know, you're, when you're focused on other things, like you know, your children. Yeah. Oh yeah. Things how you know life. Oh, I know. I tell you, it's crazy how things like that happen. Yeah. Um, I've got another one for you. This one's not really related, but this one is, uh, what is your favorite snack? Gosh, I don't, mm, I'm trying to think what I eat. I don't, I don't really, I don't really eat between meals. I know it's snack. Or, I mean, I guess it would have to be like a cheese and crackers or a charcuterie scenario. Oh man. But I, I, yeah, maybe like a, some olives and pickles and little piece like, of cheese. I don't know. <laughs> like like New York New New Year's Eve style snacks, you know, like crackers and such. Yeah, yeah, I think that's gonna have to be. Oh it, man, know? I'm gonna have to go to the store and get me some. That's oh, <laughs> I ain't had some in a while. 
Build a little charcuterie board for yourself. A charcuterie board. It's funny you mentioned that. Yeah. It's, it's funny you mentioned that because I actually have, I used to work at a 911 center. So I used to be a 911 dispatcher for the county that I uh, currently reside in. And um, that, how stressful was that? Oh man, sometimes it got pretty stressful. Um, it, it has so many different kinds of stress too. Sometimes because I mean, you get you get crazy calls, you know, and you get um, you know you get sometimes you'll get those up times where you'll be like coworkers won't be able to come in or you have to work mandatory overtime. And then if you're working mandatory overtime, you also have to juggle what shift you're going to work day or night, and then you're going to have to plan out your next two days on your sleep schedule. It, wow. it can get, it can get very difficult sometimes, or it got very difficult sometimes as far as the stress levels go, but yeah, it was, I, I did it for four and a half years before I realized that I wasn't meant to do it long term. And just I just taking the calls alone would be stressful. You it, know, just... it, it was, I'm not going to lie. It was, I yeah. was, I didn't work it in, I worked it in a part-time capacity for about three years. Then I worked it for no i'm sorry three and a half years and then i worked it full time for right at a year um i did work night shift for about three months and then i got the opportunity to go day shift which was it was amazing i could not stay in night shift night shift was very detrimental to my sleep health but oh, oh my goodness it was i wouldn't i wouldn't give it up for the world the, the experience the people that i've met you know it's it's the job is very humbling you know, at the yeah. end of the day, you get like one one day you could have um, just a, a a bump up in a parking lot, and somebody needs a police report, or the next or the next day or the next two minutes, you could get something completely opposite. You can know you could have a, like a four car accident with several fatalities. You know, it, you never know what yeah. you, you you would never know what you're gonna get, and and well, obviously that, that would be stressful. It was sometimes, but I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm so glad I, I did it because it hum it truly humbled me and uh, in so many different ways. I'd list them all, but well, I'd be here all night. But nonetheless, it was such a good job. I'm glad I did it. It was very humbling. But um, I say all that to say that um, when you were mentioning, mentioning the charcuterie board, I had a coworker of mine that um, it, it was kind of like a family. So we were in a smaller dispatch center, so we had – um, two dispatchers and then we had a supervisor. So there was just three of us most of the time on my shift in particular, it was two ladies and this, uh, coworker of mine, not the supervisor, but my other coworker, she loved to make charcuterie boards. And <laughs> she, if, if we had a chance to, if she had a chance to make one and bring it to work, she brought or she did. And what's not to love. Oh, you know? there's nothing not to love about it. I mean, the charcuterie, Me? charcuterie good. board is awesome. He's good. good whatever good. yeah dressing's yeah. great you know <laughs> and then i don't know how at some point but someone somehow along the lines they there was a there was something said and then i think someone misunderstood it and then it, it eventually became um what you said charcuterie board and we just Charcucci. yes <laughs> it's, <laughs> it has no business being as funny as it is but it's still funny regardless <laughs> And it just, when you said that, it made me think of uh, my memories at the Nile Woods Center with them saying that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, it's got me thinking about it now. Um, I kind of miss it sometimes. Go get some pickles. Go get some pickles. Get a couple of, you know, deviled eggs would be great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. Oh man. So honestly, I, th that I believe that draws us to the end of the community related questions. So we are not far short of bringing this podcast to a close. So um, with that said, if, if there's anything else that you would like to mention or ask in uh, the next few minutes, you're more than welcome to go ahead and have the floor to do that while we are wrapping up. So you have the floor for the next um, minute or two. I don't know where your where your um, subscribers are from, or mainly, but if you get a chance, Voctive is now on tour. Um, if you get a chance to see Voctive, go see them. They are um, what essentially Voices of Liberty used to be, and they're now, you know, they're their own thing and, and on tour, and they're absolutely phenomenal. If you get a chance to see them, if you get a chance to listen to their um, their music uh, on Spotify and YouTube, it's it's 
an acapella orgasm. It's a different style than voice play for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's beautiful and um, in in every sense of the word. Um, and they're and they're my friends. So you know, go to check them out. Do her um, do I'll, her I'll, and her friends a solid and go check them out. Check them out. Check them out. Um, uh, and I'll plug my friends all day. Um, voice check out voice play. Keep an eye on what is coming up next for them. They always have collabs with with um, n- with new people and um, you know old members even as well. And uh, and home free. You know, Austin is he's my Ostacles. He's he's this, my little sweetheart. So <laughs> um, yeah, go check go check out my friends and and um, it, well, hopefully I'll get some new material out for for everybody in the next year or so and. Um, and hopefully I'll, be, I'll do some more collaborations and you know if if the phone starts ringing then i'll i'll you know give you all the credit <laughs> yes for sure guys so you make sure you go check out her content thank you so much for joining us today elizabeth it was Thanks a pleasure to have me. you it was such it was a wonderful getting to talk to you learn about you and your music career guys if you haven't already go check out her uh, channel go check out some of the recordings and videos of her out there she's phenomenally talented so just give her uh Give her a visit, throw her a like, throw her some comments and subscriptions. I'm sure she would appreciate it. Um, if you are able to get us any other leads for having other guests on at some point, Elizabeth, do uh, do absolutely. keep in touch. Do keep in touch. I will, for sure. I will, for sure. I'd love to have a uh, touch-based t- podcast with you in the future, so um, I'll stay in touch for that also. So we'll see what we can do Great. about lining that up later down the road. So. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for tuning into the Vocast today with Elizabeth Gorozzo. And uh, this has been Drew on the Vocast. We will see you guys later. Take care of yourselves. Bye.